Foreclosures can be one of the best ways to get an incredible deal on a piece of real estate, whether you plan to live in that property yourself or you plan to use it for an investment property. For example, this is a foreclosure that I bought and uh, so is this one and this one. And they're all awesome real estate deals. But the world of buying foreclosed properties can get a little complicated. It's filled with legal jargon and insider, we'll call them, secrets. <laughs> well, my name is Brandon Turner, the author of the book on rental property investing and the host of the top real estate podcast on earth, The Bigger Pockets Podcast. And in this video, I wanna walk you through the process you need to find and purchase foreclosed properties. And hey, if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, be sure to click that little thumbs up button below the video, it tells the internet that this is valuable, and be sure to subscribe to the Bigger Pockets channel. All right, let's get on with it. Now, I'm gonna divide, or divide this video into three large chunks or sections. First, we're gonna get on the same page about what a foreclosure is and isn't, including the kind of the three different phases in which you could buy a foreclosure. And second, I'm gonna go and talk about the four different ways to find, four different strategies for finding foreclosures. And then I'm gonna walk you through the process of making an offer and making sure you end up with a killer good deal. Now, before diving too deep into the details of how to buy it, let's get all on the same page with the same terms. All right, a foreclosure is the process where the lien holder takes ownership of a property due to a variety of possible reasons, but usually it's the lack of payment, right? You don't pay your bills, you get foreclosed on. The foreclosure process differs with every state, but it generally begins with a bunch of notices are given to the property owner and then a legal set of steps leading up to the actual foreclosure are carried out. Now, there's generally three phases in the foreclosure process where it's possible to buy a property. There's the pre-foreclosure, there's at the courthouse steps at the foreclosure and then after foreclosure. So when learning how to buy a foreclosure, it's important to know what the three phases are. So let me define each. First, there's the pre-foreclosure phase. Now it is possible to buy a home before the foreclosure actually happens and the homeowner before they're kicked out. Now buying a property during this period is known as the pre-foreclosure and it's a common technique used by a lot of real estate investors and it can be a good way to find motivated sellers. After all, Few things in life are more motivating for a homeowner than knowing they're soon gonna be physically removed from their property. Next, there is the actual foreclosure at the courthouse steps. You see, in most states, once the legal process has been carried out and the property is sent to the county for a public auction, it's done on the courthouse steps, like sometimes figuratively, sometimes actually literally on the steps, and it's sold to the highest bidder. This process is known as the trustee sale. The bidding generally opens with an automatic starting bid of whatever amount is owed on the property. So no, you're not gonna show up and bid a dollar on a property and, and get it. It's whatever they owed on it is where the bid uh, begins at. For example, if a homeowner owed $80,000 on a loan and the loan secured the property, the bidding would start at $80,000. Now, if no one bids any higher, the lien holder will be awarded the property and be given the title. So if nobody bids higher than 80, the bank's gonna take that back at 80. A couple of years ago, I went to a courthouse steps auction and ended up winning this guy for just a buck over the opening bid. It was around 15,000 bucks because listen, no one else showed up to the auction. That was a good day. All right, now, if you plan to buy a foreclosure at the courthouse steps, here's a few tips to keep in mind. When you buy on the courthouse steps, there may be liens attached. Uh, also, you probably won't be able to see the inside of the property beforehand, and the court usually requires all cash on the day you buy it. Uh, so you can kind of rule out getting a loan on it. You know, this makes buying properties on the courthouse steps a more advanced and maybe risky strategy that I usually don't recommend for beginners, but hey, it works. All right, so we covered the pre-foreclosure and the actual foreclosure on the courthouse steps. The third, and really honestly, the, probably the most common phase that most people talk about when they talk about they bought a foreclosure, that is the actual post-foreclosure phase. You see, after the sale on the courthouse steps, the new owner of the property, probably the bank who lent on it, unless somebody bids higher, you know, they're gonna have to evict the tenant, probably the former homeowner, who might still reside there. Now, if it's a bank, the bank will generally go through the process of evicting the tenant, get the home listed with a real estate agent to sell it. The remainder of this article, I'm gonna focus on how to buy a foreclosure in this phase, the post foreclosure, after it's been filtered through the foreclosure process and is now available for sale publicly. Now, when a bank takes back the property and begins to sell it, the property is known as an REO or a real estate owned property. 
Now it's this type of real estate deal, the REO properties, that I wanna spend a lot of time on because that's what most people talk about when they're saying foreclosure. Specifically, let's talk about how to actually find these as well. The most common source of finding foreclosures is through the multiple listing service, the MLS. Now the MLS is a collection of lists put together by local real estate agents of all the properties for sale in their office. Now in the old days, these lists were actually kept in file cabinets and each office faxed them to each other and made a big list, right? But today we've got all the internet, uh, they got the internet, so it's all kept there. The MLS is fully accessible for any real estate agent. So if you're not an agent, you need to either get an agent or you should become an agent, right? So the good thing is the real estate agent is typically paid for by the seller. So it's free for you, right? Because if you're buying, it doesn't cost you any money. However, you don't have to just rely on real estate agents to tell you what properties are listed. You can actually get a lot of information online through a lot of different real estate portals like realtor.com, redfin.com, zillow.com, or trulia.com. These sites will help you sift through nearly all the listings and give you at least some of the information about the property. Keep in mind, however, these lists can also be slightly delayed or outdated. So in a hot market, you could miss out on some deals if you're only relying on these real estate portals. All right, second, you can buy REOs directly from a bank's REO department. Banks typically have an REO department, somebody that is in charge of working through those properties. Now, I said earlier, most REOs actually end up on the MLS, but it is possible to make connections with an REO department at a bank and have access to properties before they put on the MLS. This is especially true with smaller community banks and larger commercial properties. All right, third, the HUD store. You know, some properties have been foreclosed on by the US, Housing of, uh, US Department of Housing and Urban Development, which is HUD, right? So if you get a HUD loan and you get foreclosed on, a lot of times they're put on the MLS, but a lot of times they're just privately listed on the HUD website at hudhomestore.com. So be sure to check that out as well. Now, the fourth way to find foreclosures, foreclosure.com. So foreclosure.com is a website that you can find low price distressed foreclosures like bank owned homes, government foreclosures like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, HUD. There's pre foreclosures on there. There's REO properties and foreclosure auctions among other things. So foreclosure.com curates them all through a membership on their site. So if you're interested in that, BiggerPockets actually has a partnership with them and we can give our viewers a seven day free trial. Just go to biggerpockets.foreclosure.com to start searching uh, and check it out. All right, so now you have some tangible steps on where to find foreclosures. The rest of this video is gonna go into some more detail on how to actually buy one of these properties and make sure you get a great deal. So let's talk about putting in your offer. Once you find a property you wanna buy, it's time to submit your offer. Again, this is when a good real estate agent comes in really handy. Typically, you're gonna meet with your agent, tell them, like, let them know the terms you wanna offer, how much, when are you gonna close, how are you gonna finance it. Your agent will submit an offer to the seller and they'll look it over. And then they got a few possibilities. First, they could accept it, woohoo! They could deny it, ugh. They could ignore you if it's too low. Uh, in other words, it's a denying. Or most common, they could counter you. They'd tell you, no, nah, not that, but how about this? And many times if there's a lot of offers on a property, the seller is gonna ask you to submit your highest and best offer. In other words, they're saying, all right, you know, there's a lot of bidding here, let's, let's see what you got, you know, give us the most you can do. Now it's easy to fall into auction mode and overpay when that happens because you allow the emotion to catch up with you, but uh, you know, stick to the numbers, keep the emotion out of it. And you know, that really brings up a really, really uh, important point here. Just because something is a foreclosure does not mean it's a good deal. In fact, most of them are not. So it's vital you learn how to analyze a real estate deal and know exactly how much you should pay for a property. And if you want some help with that, be sure to check out the Bigger Pockets analysis calculators. You can analyze a real estate deal, flip, rental, wholesale, burr, in under five minutes. And even if you're brand new to this, you can learn a ton. So definitely check it out, biggerpockets.com slash analysis. All right, moving on. So let's say your offer gets accepted. Well, now it's time to do your due diligence and make sure all your ducks are in a row. This is a time where you hire an inspector to check out the property, you get your financing fully in place, and in most states, the closing process is handled by a title company who's gonna prepare all the documents, make sure the title's correct, and arrange for the signing of all the parties. However, in some states, an attorney is responsible for that. Uh, your agent is gonna know whether you're an attorney or a title company state. All right, after both parties have signed the document and the new deed has been recorded with the local county, the property is now officially yours. It's no longer foreclosure, it's your property. Congratulations. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give that little thumbs up, letting the internet know, and of course, subscribe 
to our channel here. And lastly, did you know that Bigger Pockets is actually way more than just video content? We're also the world's largest real estate investing forum. Millions of posts on there. The largest real estate investing blog, over 20 posts every week. We have the world's largest real estate podcast with over 50 million downloads. We're a social network with over a million members all learning how to use real estate to live an incredible life. So I hope you check out the website and other resources as well. Create a free account today and start walking this journey together towards financial freedom. For biggerpockets.com, my name is Brandon Turner, signing off. Thank God.